Inside Michigan Football is presented by Meyer. The Michigan Wolverines have come to Indianapolis and secured back-to-back -back Big Ten championships with a 43-22 win over the Purdue Boilermakers. Hi again, friends, and welcome inside Lucas Oil Stadium. Michigan, Big Ten champs, we saw them celebrate on the field back-to-back. It, there's a sweet feeling. It doesn't happen often that you get a chance to have back-to-back -back celebrations like this, back-to-back -back wins against Ohio State, back-to-back -back, you know, Big Ten championships, and this year, 13-0. No mar on the record. I'm Doug Karsh, John Jansen, the former Michigan captain and national champion, and let's get right to the highlights. Wolverines opening kick, Matthew Hibner with a big hit. It takes a special skill set, a special <laughs> mindset to be able to come down and make plays like this, and, I mean, he's done it all season long and two times nice tonight. Yeah, he did it on the first two kickoffs Michigan had. Purdue's first drive, first play, Will Johnson. What a game this kid had. This was a loss of six. I mean, all game long, whether it was plays in the backfield, defending guys, I mean, he his growth this year is probably more than we've seen anybody all season long. Purdue faced a third and 13. Aiden O'Connell sacked by Jalen Harrow, who's had a great finish to this season. Yeah, these, they knew that these were going to be precious tonight. Aiden O'Connell ball was in his hand and out quickly. So anytime you get a chance to get a hit on him, it's great that Jalen Harrow put that pressure on early. All right, Michigan's first possession. They're looking at a third and nine, and here's Cornelius Johnson rolls over a defender and gets the yardage for the first down. Yeah, his butt doesn't hit the ground, so he's not down until he is, and uh, was able to pick up the first. All right, third and six. Again, Michigan moves the chains. This time, it's Ronnie Bell for 16 yards. And J.J. was very accurate, very confident early on. It felt like this offense was operating at a high level. All right, here we go. Michigan from the Purdue 25. Let's go to Jansen Vision. Yeah, and this is going to be obviously the Colson Loveland touchdown. And there's a couple of things I want to show you as it starts to go here. I want you to watch what play action pass does. It makes it very easy for the offensive line to be able to set a wall. Now you're going to see these linebackers come up, and it makes the, the, the vision for J.J. McCarthy, look at all the space he's got. There's no one even pressuring him. And right here, Colston Loveland does a great job of making himself available to the quarterback. And at the end, it's just simply go get the ball. And Colston Loveland did a great job of fighting for a 50-50 ball and contested catch. And he's just a freshman, a contested catch indeed. All right, Purdue got something going on their next possession. This is Charlie Jones. He had a catch of 15 yards, another catch of 14 yards, and we see why he led the Big Ten in receiving. He's really good at running routes, very precise routes. You wonder what, how he gets open a lot. It's the precise routes. And then when he's not open and he's still covered, he's technically, to Aiden O'Connell, still open. Great body control. Short touchdown run for Purdue made it 7-7. Purdue's next possession in a tie game, they go with the fake punt. This was really close, but they just got the first down. Yeah, they reviewed it. They took another look at it. He did pick up the first, and we knew that coming into this game. Jeff Brom's team was going to take some chances and roll the dice a little bit. Purdue led 10-7 after a field goal. Michigan started something going on the ground here. Donovan Edwards for seven yards. Donovan Edwards for five yards. And, John, this is kind of the way it's been kind of chip away, chip away, and then Donovan Edwards eventually breaks your back. Yeah, and it wasn't a lot to be gained early on, but this offensive line, and, and quite honestly, the play callers, they stuck with the run game. They knew what they were good at. They knew what would work in the second, third, and fourth quarters. All right, here's JJ with a dart to Ronnie Bell. This was an impressive throw. It was, just over the linebackers outreached hands, right in front of the, the defensive backs. His accuracy, for the most part today, was really good. Kalel Mullings on fourth and one. He does more than just throw passes, John. Yeah, he's a short down specialist, so <laughs> we'll, we'll take it any way we can get it. Two yards. All right, Michigan needs nine yards for a first down on second and nine, and here it is, Donovan Edwards. That gets a first down, and that sets up Michigan third and four from the Purdue seven, let's go to Jansen Vision. All right, and on this one, I want you to watch Luke Schoonmaker. He's lined up right here, all right? And then the ability for JJ to escape the pocket, extend the play, allow Luke to get open in the end zone. And as he does right now, you could see, there's right now covered, 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 covered. There's no one to throw the ball to. J.J. sees it, feels the pressure coming from his backside. He's going to roll out this way. And as soon as he does, all right, now he finds Luke Schoonmaker in the end zone. 
just a nice pitch and catch, but the only reason that was available was because J.J. was able to escape the pocket. Wolverines led it 14 to 10. Jalen Harrell with another sack of Aiden O'Connell. He had a very good first half, two sacks, and then on third and 12, here's T.J. Sheffield for 20 yards, and that set up a late Purdue field goal to make it 14-13 at the half. We know the script. These games are all close at the half, and then Michigan comes out in the second half, makes the adjustments, and takes the game over. Well, it gives you confidence that they're feeling things out in the first half. We'd all love it to be able to go into halftime up two touchdowns, but whether it's defensive adjustments and we've seen the adjustments that they've made last week against Ohio State, only three you know points in the second half. Offensively, to be able to come out and put a drive together, we've seen that throughout the course of the year. And hey, as we know, they're going to get the ball in the second half. Wolverines wasted no time changing the script on this game. We'll have second half highlights when we continue here on Inside Michigan Football. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2022 Michigan football season and proud supporter of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest. Back to back. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. One, two. You know what to do. Hey. Hell to the victors. John, did you make it in the locker room in time to sing the victors with them? I did. I did. It was, it, it, there's no better feeling than when coach says, one, two, you know what to do. And then the whole locker room busts into the victors. And this team got to do it 13 times. Thanks to, once again, an outstanding second half. Let's pick it up. First play of the second half, the Wolverines line three tight ends up on the left side, and Donovan Edwards runs behind him for just 60 yards. I know. Donovan Edwards, we saw last week his ability, once he gets into the secondary, to be explosive and finish runs. This one, there's one man to beat, and all he has to do is make a tackle and can't do it on Donovan Edwards, makes a miss, and then it's all green grass from there. Donovan Edwards sets up Michigan. Here we go, third and two, Kalel Mullings. Back in the game, short yardage situation. Let's go to Jansen Vision. Yeah, and on this one, Joel Honigford is that tight end here. He's a former offensive lineman. I want to watch everybody on this offensive line block down and then seal everything off. And for Khalil Mullings, it's an easy get to the line of scrimmage, cut it back, and he's going to take it down to the two-yard line. But it's a great job of sealing everything off and making it a very easy read for Khalil Mullings. He would score on the next play, a one-yard touchdown run, and Michigan led it 21-13. to Let's pick it up, Purdue's next possession. Michael Barrett into the backfield for a tackle for loss here. Michael Barrett has done a great job all season long of reading his defensive lineman, reading the offensive lineman, and then picking that gap to hit. And he's, tonight, he had some big plays in the backfield. Then Purdue on third and six throws an incompletion and Michigan forces a punt and the Wolverines take over from their own 33 yard line and the first play JJ finds Luke Schoonmaker for 45 yards. It was a beautiful thing to be able to find a tight end wide open at that time of the game to start the second half it was just it was smooth sailing. And then the next play it's Donovan Edwards look at this run. Yeah, Donovan is so good at being patient in the backfield. So many of his runs, if he just hits the hole, there's nothing there. And But that patience allows the offensive line to do their job. They did a great job tonight and be able to get, get in behind him and make some cuts. We counted seven broken tackles seven. on that touchdown run. It was 28 to 13. All right, Purdue is threatening, and Will Johnson steps in front of this pass and gets an interception. Will Johnson, on when you look and watch him, the way he's developed all season long, from kind of being timid a little bit at the start of the season to being very aggressive, to be able to step in front of Charlie Jones here 
and make that gamble with a with Aiden O'Connell as accurate he's he was all day long shows you the confidence that he's now playing with. All right, Purdue forces a punt. However, after that, here's Mikey Sainra still firing into the backfield, a big tackle for loss. They've used him in so many different ways, and hey, they gamble a, a little bit on this one. They run right, they they blitz right into the run. He's able to adjust and make the play. Michigan holds Purdue on third down and forces another field goal. It was 28 to 16. Here, third and three, J.J. on the move finds Ronnie Bell for 10 yards. Yeah, again, J.J. being able to escape the pocket, move outside the tackle box, and find his receivers downfield. Here he had a ton of time and maybe got a little bit greedy. Once he got out of the pocket, Jamari Brown comes up with an interception, but just J.J.'s third of the year. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's proven that he could take care of the ball. This one ill-advised, just let it sail a little bit on him. All right, Purdue drives deep into Michigan territory. The defense flushes Aiden O'Connell out, forces an incompletion. Purdue kicks another field goal. Michigan takes over. It's Donovan Edwards bouncing this run outside for 16 yards in front of the Michigan bench. His speed, his ability to, and awareness of where the openings are on the field is, is really developed, especially we've seen it in the last couple of games. Purdue forced a punt. And here, once again, is Will Johnson coming up with another interception. And I want you to watch on Jansen Vision here where, and this is something that I was not happy with all game long. You basically got a 10-yard cushion right here. And so many times you would see Aiden O'Connell just throw the ball out there, pick up uh, an, an easy five or six yards. But on this one, Will Johnson has been baiting him all, see, all game long. All the receiver's going to do is try and run a little in route like they've been doing, and Will Johnson just steps right in front for the interception. Does a great job of reading the quarterback's eyes, timing it out just right, and stepping in front of the receiver for the interception. The Wolverines, they get into a third and 11, and look at this pass from J.J. McCarthy to Ronnie Bell in the back of the end zone. This was one of his better passes. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was just an absolute bullet. It looked like it was on a, on a rope. The accuracy, the timing, and Ronnie Bell to be able to come down with it in the end zone. 17 yards, and the Wolverines set up to go for two. And this was unique. This was unique, and I want, to, I want you to see this. The offensive line is all moving to the left with Donovan Edwards. That gives them one option. You've got, uh, I think it was Matthew Hibner. Carter, is, Seltzer. Carter Seltzer is in here at center. He's actually eligible along with everybody else over here. So you've got a lot of different options. And Purdue actually did a good job of adjusting to this. And I'm going to just get it just a little bit further. All right, if they don't adjust out here, all right, you've got Donovan Edwards. He's just going to step back here, catch the ball, and get behind his big offensive line. If they do adjust, now all of a sudden you've got all of these options over here and all of this area to work with. It's very unique and very creative. And as it goes right here, you got a bunch of guys. How do these guys know where everybody's going? You got one guy going after the passer. All of a sudden, JJ makes a threat to go. And all of a sudden, right here, you've got two options. You got Colson Loveland in the back here, and you've got uh, Luke Schoonmaker right there. Easy pitch and catch for the two point conversion. That made it 36 to 19. Purdue would drive into Michigan territory. And once again, Will Johnson in coverage. This ball, I mean, there's nowhere to throw it. No. And whether it was interceptions, whether it was, you know, pressure in the backfield, the ability to, to, to read on a, on a wide receiver screen, and now just perfect technique, you, you, there was no way to beat him today. That led to another Purdue field goal, 36-22, onside kick, Carter Seltzer, no problem. Yeah, hey, every, nice to be able to see a, a, a clean ground ball field. <laughs> Fourth and two, here's Kalel Mullings again for three yards. Hey, it's short down specialist. That's what we're going to have to start calling him. And here he is, a three-yard touchdown run. That led to the final score, 43-22. to It's nice to see him get in the end zone. I mean, a guy that we haven't seen in the backfield since spring ball. And all of a sudden, hey, last week, Throws a nice nice pass for a first down. This week picked up a couple of key first downs, able to get in the end zone. We'll go into the Michigan locker room and hear from the head coach, Jim Harbaugh, next here on Inside Michigan Football. Time for our Arrow Steel Man of the Week, and this week we're going with the Michigan offensive line, exerting their will in the second half 
as Michigan put away Purdue. And this offense line is special. You know, it's the best offense line in the country. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll repeat the Joe Moore award. And as long as I've been doing college football, I haven't got a conference championship. And I, I checked that off the list today. So, you know, I, you know we, got, we got some more goals to go knock off. But th today feels great. Your thoughts on those five guys in front of you? Oh, my God. I, I just can't say enough positive things about those boys. I mean, every single one of them is just a hard worker, a great human being. And it's the best offensive line in the country. Hands up. Looking, fires to the end zone. And it is caught. Touchdown. Felt great last year, but feels that much better this year. You guys come out of the Ohio State game. How difficult was it to stay focused on this moment? Uh, it's definitely a challenge, but this team is a mature group, and it was just that 24-hour rule. I mean, I'm not going to lie, it was probably a 48-hour rule, but uh, it was just from the get-go, starting Monday. It was just, we're locking in, nameless, faceless opponent. They're in our way to our ultimate goal. So, hey, man, that's what we do now. You know, like, this should be normal to all the young guys. This should be what we do from here on out. We didn't set the tone. We're going to keep setting it. Back-to-back -back Big Ten champs, 13-0. I just heard it was first time program history, so, I mean, it's special. Back to pass, O'Connell fires, and it is intercepted! Jumping in front of the route for the Wolverines, it's Will Johnson, the freshman, again! Big Ten championship, we got to lay it all on the line. It was really just preparation. Like, I knew it was coming, those two picks, so I just made a play. What is it about the big moment that makes you shine? Uh, I mean, I've always been that way, just shining those big moments and just uh, never, never have any fear. Back to pass, looking, steps up, Wolverines, here comes the pressure, and down goes O'Connell. Heart, man, we've been playing with heart all year long, man, playing for each other, playing for the block M, man, playing for Coach Hardball, like, this is what we do. Feels great, uh, I've never, never thought I would be a champion from the first year, but doing it, doing it again, just feels great. But a dream come true. And we'll hand it off to Donovan Edwards, makes a good cut in the backfield. Now back towards the middle of the field, inside the 10, runs through a tackler to the goal line. Donovan Edwards, touchdown. We just got dominant backs. Um, you know, we got a lot of depth at the position. Um, we, you know, we got the best back in the country, and we got the best one-two punch in the backfield. And whenever, whoever's in, you know, it, the train doesn't stop. It feels great. You know, it's a lot of work that went into this in the offseason, but we all understand that the job's not done. Today's conversation with Jim Harbaugh is brought to you by Meyer. Back to back Big Ten champs. How's it feel? Feels great. Feels really good. Uh, you know, this team, I've talked about it. The, uh, it's a happy mission. It's not a grim mission, but it's more than that. It's a, it's a godly mission. This team is, uh, people talk about culture, but this is a brotherhood here between the players, the staff, coaches, everybody. Donovan Edwards, 25 carries, 185 yards. He was the MVP of tonight's game. Your thoughts on him? I uh, just, He's the best. I mean, um, my super so sophomores, uh, Donovan, J.J. McCarthy, uh, great game by Donovan. Just, uh, just, the, uh, just the absolute best, just the biggest heart of anybody on the uh, – there's nobody's got a bigger heart than him. Uh, Ronnie Bell, Will Johnson, you know, just so many guys. Uh, the offensive lineman up front just kept, uh, just kept wearing on him and uh, finally cracked him. Well, you mentioned Will Johnson, two interceptions. I mean, it couldn't have come at a bigger time. Yeah, huge time. He's been uh, been talking about it, been waiting, you know, waiting for it to break out, and boy, it did today. So, what's what's it feel like now? That, is it any different this year than it was last year? Yeah, it feels good. I mean, uh, very very happy, you know. Um, but there's more work to be done. All right, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Inside Michigan football continues in a moment, but first, we're checking in from London. Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern time, the Wolverines take on Kentucky in the Hall of Fame London College Basketball Showcase. It's the eighth meeting all-time between the two programs and the first since the 2014 Regional Final. What an amazing trip this has been. The sights, the sounds, the history of this great European city, and we'll bring it all to you next week on the season debut edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. Until then, I'm Ed Kondersky from Across the Pond. Ed in London, and the next time we will see you on Inside Michigan Football, we will likely be in Arizona for a national semifinal game. Last year, we know what happened. This team has always set that as a goal. I expect they'll be more competitive this year. Yeah, different, different team different location, a lot of different things about it, and uh, this team is different as well. Experience is a big factor in getting in and having success in the playoffs. Well, we'll see you from Arizona on Inside Michigan Football 
Thanks for watching. So long. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2022 Michigan football season and proud supporter of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest.